You will be familiar with experiments with springs as you get to this point in physics. If you apply a force, we can measure the extension and we can then look at Hooke's law and look at the properties for that particular object. When we look at the young modulus, we're actually looking at the material that the object is made out of. Again, we can apply a force, we can look at the extension, but here we do something different with the data. So the young modulus is equal to the ratio of the tensile stress divided by the tensile strain. Now in physics, we tend to use E to represent the young modulus. Uh, we can represent stress with the uh, sigma that we have here, and we can have strain represented with an epsilon. Okay, sometimes uh, the exam boards just write this out as stress divided by strain. Now to work out the stress, that's equal to the force applied divided by the area, and the strain is equal to the extension divided by the original length. Now I'm going to use the letter E to represent the extension. Some exam boards use delta L, some use delta X or even just an X, but I'm just going to use E. Again, uh, you should be familiar with the data sheet for your exam board, but the physics, the underlying physics is always going to be exactly the same. Now that looks a little bit messy, so we can bring the L up and the A down to say that the young modulus is equal to F L over E A. Now we can measure the force because that's going to be equal to the weight that we apply, in this case, to a piece of wire. Uh, we can measure the original length of that uh, piece of wire. The extension can be measured, but the area is a little bit more tricky. Now we don't measure the area directly. Instead, when you have a piece of wire, all we can really do to work out the cross-sectional area is to measure the diameter. Now when it comes to measuring the diameter of a wire, you want to make sure that you take that measurement in at least three places. I'm going to be using this uh, digital scale here, but there are vernier scales or uh, screw gauge micrometers, um, but I've got another video where I explain about how to actually measure precisely and accurately the diameter of a piece of wire. And of course the uh, diameter is related to the area by the equation A is equal to pi d squared over four. Now that's the same as pi r squared, but obviously we're measuring diameter, so that's the equation we're going to use. So what I'm going to do is say that um, to work out the force applied to the wire, that's equal to the weight, which is uh, loading the wire, and that's equal to the mass times the gravitational field strength. So we're going to put that in there, and the area we're going to replace by pi d squared over 4. So what we then find is that the young modulus is equal to 4 mgl over e pi d squared. Um, but what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be altering the mass that we apply to the end of a wire to make it extend. So if I make m the subject, we find that the mass is equal to e e pi d squared over 4 gl. And um, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be changing the mass and we're going to be measuring the extension. Now let me just rewrite that with a bit more colour. And the reason I did that was because if we take the data and we plot E on the x-axis and the mass on the y-axis, we find that the gradient of the line is equal to E pi d squared over 4 gl. So that means if we plot some data, we can work out the gradient. And then if we know the gradient and we've measured the diameter of the wire, we know the starting length and also the gravitational field strength, we can then use that to work out the young modulus of that particular material. So how do we add the mass? How do we measure the extension? Oh, by the way, if you're watching this video on YouTube and you want to find the supporting resources for this video, including all of the theory, how to set up the equipment, and also extra additional practicals for A-level physics, you can find all of these over at alevelphysicsonline.com. Anyway, back to the video. For this practical, we're going to be using some standard equipment and just some thin copper wire. Now, uh, this is a 36 SWG, and that means it's thin enough to extend, hopefully without snapping. Now, the reason that I'm wearing eye protection, it seems over the top, I know, but there's quite a lot of energy stored in a stretched wire, and if it does snap, which is quite likely, the ends can move really quickly, and you don't want them scraping across the front of your eye, causing some damage. So, it does seem over the top, but I am gonna wear eye protection throughout. So, I've got uh, a load of wire, and actually what I did at the end was all I did was I um, basically just tied a knot in it. So there we have just a small loop tied in the end of the wire and that means we can hang uh, a mass hanger from it and then we can then start to load that up. Now to make sure that this is hanging vertically I'm just going to be using a pulley that goes over the edge of the bench and to attach the other end of the wire so it doesn't slip all I have is simply two blocks of wood. And what you can do is with the end of the wire that you want to attach, you just need to wrap this around the wooden block a couple of times 
you can then attach it with some kind of clamp. And there we have it clamped nicely onto the edge of the desk. And now we have our horizontal wire. Now this can then go over the pulley, you can load it up and you can measure the extension. Now because strain is equal to the ratio of the extension to the original length, you want to make the starting wire as long as possible. If you've got something which is twice as long, we're going to get twice the extension for that wire, which means that any measurements in the extension are going to have a lower percentage uncertainty. So we're going to get this set up like so. So now we have the wire set up. I've actually moved the blocks further back so I've got the longest piece of wire I can possibly use within the kind of confines of the, of the studio. Um, what I'm going to do is add over here just a piece of electrical tape uh, and this is going to mark on the wire the start point where we're going to measure the extension from. So um, hopefully you can sort of see this okay. If I just put this over the wire like so, this should hopefully hang down vertically. And what we can then do is use our meter ruler and we're going to measure from this point back to the start of the wire all the way over there. So that's our starting length. Now to measure the extension, uh, I'm going to use a ruler. This one I'm just going to put on the desk. Um, it might also be worth, you know, actually attaching this to the desk so it doesn't move. Uh, depending on the, the length of the, the piece of electrical tape, you can always use uh, blocks, maybe to actually raise up the height of that ruler. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start loading up the wire and at the moment I do have a mass hanger of 50 grams on the end which is basically our starting point. So I'm going to be looking at the additional mass and the additional extension. So if I just put on 50 grams, again making sure that I've got eye protection on and also thinking about making sure there's some kind of cushion beneath the mass and also not putting my feet there just in case it snaps. With 50 grams it hardly moves at all, I think less than a millimetre. So what I'm going to do now is add another 50 grams. Again, I'm just going to let the wire settle down and we can see we're measuring to the nearest millimeter, but there's not much extension at all. So I'm going to keep loading up the wire. And so I've now loaded up by about six of these 50 gram masses. We can see the extensions actually about six or seven millimeters. Um, with the wire that we've got, it's always a bit of a compromise between having something thin enough to get a good extension, but then also thick enough that it doesn't snap. But I'm just going to keep loading this up. And occasionally we might get to a point where you add a small mass, but we get quite a large extension. And this is the region of this kind of sort of plastic behaviour that we often have just before failure. So I've kind of got to my limit there. Uh, we see we've got to some maximum value, we can now take that data and do some analysis. So now you've got data for mass and extension, these can be plotted on the graph. Where the two quantities are directly proportional, we can take the gradient of that line and then use the equation that we saw earlier in the video to work out the value for the young modulus. Now the biggest limitation with this using standard equipment is that when we measure the extension, we're only measuring to the nearest millimetre and yet the extensions are quite small. And this is going to give us a large percentage uncertainty in that data. Now there are ways to overcome that, perhaps using a vernier scale or even this vertical uh, setup called Searle's apparatus and there are ways to measure smaller extensions. So that was an overview of this practical using a horizontal wire in order to measure the young modulus of a material. And of course, if you are watching this video on YouTube, which many of you are, you can find even more resources to support this and other practicals at alevelphysicsonline.com. And that includes this sheet here that has the theory, the experimental setups, and alternative methods, and even notes for teachers and technicians. You can find all of that at alevelphysicsonline.com.